Hi, this is Miss Walters. Welcome back to our third week with online learning. I'm excited to continue our unit in game design. Um, we've already done two different games, and this will be our third. Um, it is getting a little bit more complicated as we go through um, the different game versions. And this week, we're actually going to be creating a platform game. Um, so I wanted to start kind of just recapping um, some of the material that you've learned previously, and then how you're going to use that knowledge to build a platform game for today's lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first thing you need to always make sure you do is to log in to see us first. Um, that is where all of the curriculum is and really um, where the project is that I want you to start. Um, please, please watch all the videos. Um, don't skip a video. Don't try to um, kind of go off script and do your own thing. Really, really try to get the concepts that I'm hoping you want, um, that I want you to learn in this lesson. So that starts with the racing game. Um, that was where we created a two player racing game in which the user has to press certain keys to control the movement of the sprite. Um, some of you use different sprites, um, maybe characters, maybe a kangaroo, and then most people used um, a car and had a racetrack. Um, I want to show you one that I really um, loved. Um, this was created by Jamie Parks, and then it was also um, tweaked just a little bit by Connor, um, who helped her with the sensing and um, the speed. Okay, so you press play. Notice that she's got a real cool intro into the, the race. And then it says click red card to exit, click yellow card to choose a card. So she's kind of building on some of those skills we learned with storytelling, having a background scene, bringing in animation. So I'm going to click the yellow card. Notice that she's um, actually put four different cars into the program. Um, you can see that I can choose a car and click it. So I'm going to go ahead and click. And then notice that she has some variables. She wanted to have the computer calculate how many times the car goes around and makes a lap, what the top speed is, and the seconds that it takes to make a lap. And then, of course, you have to press. Notice that the speed's changing. My top speed was three. And then I can turn a little bit and continue to go, continue to go. And then she has an obstacle to where if I hit the obstacle, then I'm going to be taught right back to the beginning. OK. Oops, sorry. I'm getting way outside the lines. Okay, so I'll just stop right there. But again, the idea is that you race around the track um, and then it turns that corner and as soon as it crosses the finish line or this pink bar, that's when you'd see another lap. Um, so really awesome, I'll just show you briefly um, the inside of her coat. Um, so she's got lots of things going on here, lots of if then statements, and then she uses some sensing blocks. Um, then she has right here is her code for to calculate to change the laps by one every time the car passes the pink line. So really, really awesome job, Jamie. And thank you so much, Connor, for helping her to tweak it. Um, again, that's what I would really love to see with some of these projects. If, if you are struggling, talk to a friend, share your project, tell them what, what's happening. It's always wonderful to have an extra pair of eyes that look, can look at your code line by line and see where maybe the breakdown is happening and why your code isn't working the way you want it to. Okay. So then we went into the maze game. Um, this, um, what I was looking for was that you had a sprite that followed a mouse through a maze. It has to navigate through a maze and get to some kind of goal um, at the end of the maze. And then there was obstacles that were put in the way to where, again, if it hits an obstacle, then it goes right back to the beginning, kind of making it a challenge for the person you, um, you play in your video game. Today we're going to, want to go into platform games and we're going to create and learn about platform games and then we're going to actually program a player to move and jump across the platforms. So you click the arrow down and you start right here at the introduction. I'm actually going to have us play through the introduction connect so I can, because she does a really good wrap up. Welcome to day four of Scratch Games. Today, you'll create a platform game. 
In this type of game, a sprite must move across raised platforms or obstacles. Some popular platform game examples include Super Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong, and more recently, Doodle Jump. Look at how if statements and events are used in one of the earliest platform games, Donkey Kong. In Donkey Kong, a character named Mario must rescue another character while climbing a tower and avoiding Donkey Kong's barrels. First, look at how events are used in this game. Remember from Day 2's racing game that events allow computer scientists like you to tell a computer when to run code or complete an action. When the user presses the right arrow, Mario moves right. When the user presses the left arrow, Mario moves left. And when the user presses the space key, Mario jumps. These examples all represent an important computer science concept you're going to work with today, events. Events tell the computer when to run code. Next, take a look at how Donkey Kong uses if statements. You used if statements in day three's maze game to instruct the computer to make decisions. If statements look like this. If a condition is true, then do this action. In Donkey Kong, if Mario is touching a platform, then he will fall. If Mario touches a barrel, then he loses a life. If Mario reaches a sprite, then the user wins. The platform game that you will create today features a sprite that must jump into platforms to reach another sprite. This game is similar to Donkey Kong and uses the same types of events and if statement code. In this game, the sprite moves when the arrow keys are pressed. If the sprite is not touching a platform, then it will fall until it dies. If the sprite reaches a sprite at the top of the platform, then the user wins. To get started, open the starter project by clicking on the link next to this page. Sign in. Click Remix. If you don't click Remix or sign in, any work that you complete will not be saved. So please be certain that you complete this step. Next, add two sprites to your project. To select a sprite, click Choose New Sprite from Library. You can choose whichever sprites you would like for your project. Then, arrange the sprites on the screen in a way that makes sense for your game. You can change the sprite size, time during this step to make your project look the way you want it to look. Then return to the screen and click the green arrow to move on to the next screencast. Now it's your turn. Open the platform starter project, then sign into Scratch and click Remix. Add two sprites, position them correctly for your game. Okay, so I wanted to show you the whole video um, because for on the dashboard for me to see that you have watched your videos, you have to watch it all the way to the end. So don't pause it, don't skip ahead, watch the entire video before you start actually trying to work on your project. Then follow these steps. Open the platform starter project. Remember she pointed to the link here. Sign in and click remix. Add two sprites. So I'm going to go back into my um, my Scratch account and show you what I've been creating. Um, so I go under Dorothy Dot Waters and My Stuff. And you'll see all the projects that I've worked on. Okay, so the first one I wanted to do was Monkey Business, and this is straight from what I've learned um, just with Activity 4. Okay, so you'll notice that I have, um, I have did a little bit of a variation myself by changing the background and adding a different color platforms and then a goal of bananas at the end. So let me go ahead and play that and show you how it works. So it starts back into that um, position every time. And then for mine, you press the space arrow to make it go up. And then if I'm not pressing the space key, um, then it falls back down to the platform. And then notice that it can sense when I'm on a um, touching that color and then I got the, my goal and it switched and made a sound. Okay, um, so let me kind of take you inside and show you how I coded that. Okay, so the platform here um, is just kind of establishing that I have where anytime it hits the bottom, it's going to know to stop. Um, otherwise, if it was up here, it's just gonna continue falling down. 
um, my monkey obviously has the most code because it's the sprite that I'm manipulating. Um, when I press the space key, it changes its Y value by a positive 100. Then I have, if it touches the color that's in the platforms, um, it's going to change by negative 10 forever, which means it's going to keep going down until it's not, it is touching it. Then I have, when it touches the bananas, to say yippee for two seconds and then play the sound, chi chi. And then I have right arrow, repeat until not pressing the right arrow, change the x-axis. And then when I click the left arrow, I can go backwards. And when I'm not pressing the left arrow, it doesn't change the x-axis. Then here for my banana, I have um, to show at the beginning because it has two costumes. And then I wanted it to, when the banana senses that the, it's been touched by the monkey or the monkey's reached its goal, it was to switch costumes to the banana peel. Okay, and then you can see these are just different platforms that are here. Okay, um, and I just simply duplicated those platforms and I arranged them on the screen. So nothing too difficult. Um, I went and followed exactly the code that I saw in CS first. The only thing I changed was the background. And because the background had a little bit of black, that meant that it was sensing that black in the um, picture. And so that's why I had to change colors for my platform and for the ground. Um, otherwise, I could have kept it black if I had not had the background. I also didn't want a monkey to uh, find a balloon as the goal, and so I changed it to something more relevant and made it bananas. And then I wanted the bananas to actually look like they were about to be eaten. You hear that chewing sound, and then um, have the bananas change to where they look like they've been peeled. Um, I also, um, there is a video tutorial that I want to show you off of YouTube. Um, I get a lot of great ideas from following other creators on YouTube. Notice that I just typed in platform games, simple, and that led me to this video. Really great video. You can see a lot more complex code. He's keeping up with the speed of the X and Y axis and using lot. So a couple of more, more variables. And so let me bring, show you that and how I kind of made a variation of that following his code. Okay, so I got Pac-Man. Okay, and so it starts at the beginning again. Notice that I'm gonna be, have three variables. I'm gonna be keeping up with the Pac-Man's um, X speed, his Y speed, and then Y. So again, I'm pressing the space bar. And again, it's a platform game, so I have to kind of move and navigate along the platform. And then you heard the sound as I reached my goal. So, honestly, if you um, just follow the tutorial and do exactly what CS First tells you to do, and you press next, and you use event blocks to make it move, uh, make your sprite jump, and then you watch the video about how to make it go. Um, left and right and you do something where when it reaches the goal um, or something happens that would be a hundred percent you do not have to get really complicated if you want to kind of experiment and make it more complicated you're more than welcome to but you'll notice that this is actually building on the code we already know this is what we learned in this code right here is what we learned with the maze lesson um, basically, just how to make that movement of going left, right, up, and down. Actually, that was the racing game. Um, very smooth to where it feels natural. Then, in the maze, we talked about sensing, using the sensing block. Now, what we have is we're wanting it to sense those platforms as we jump on them. And we've added in that we want it to, if it's not touching something, to fall back to the ground, to where the players have to constantly jump and land on a platform to advance to their actual goal. So that's today's lesson. Make sure, please make sure you're going through all of the video tutorials. Um, notice that this one's only one minute. Um, a couple of them are two minutes. Usually what I will do is after I've opened up the starter project, I will watch a little bit of the video, manipulate the code, make sure it's working piece by piece by piece, and then I can have my finished product. Then once I feel confident with my project, then that's when I can um, go ahead and say, hmm, let me try to 
change, you know, make it more advanced by maybe changing the background, maybe changing the platforms using the Pac-Man. Um, let me show you just a little bit of the code inside this one. So the banana is just, it shows up at the beginning and then when it's touched by Pac-Man, it hides um, the platform. Um, you can see is right here. I just put um, an arrangement of different black blocks and then Pac-Man has the most code because that's my sprite that's moving around. And so I literally followed um, the young man's tutorial on YouTube and came up where I just made my own version of it. And then when he touches the banana, he plays the chomping sound and says, yummy. Um, again, please, please, please do not hesitate to email me to um, ask if we can Zoom face to face, um, attend our Zoom meeting um, later today at 2.30 to find out more about why your code's not working. Often what I'll do, like I did in Jamie's project, is when she sent me her, shared her project with me, I was able to open it up look at the code and see where some of the problems were. And for that particular one, all it needed to happen was her sprite be a little bit smaller and the black was not the right shade um, when it was touching the outside of her course. I'm sorry, the green. And so just some minor changes made her program work beautifully. Again, hoping everybody turns their project in on time. It's due, um, the maze project is actually due today. So please don't forget to do that. Again, I hope you've enjoyed learning about game design. So far, you've turned in the racing game and gotten a grade for that in Room Web. You've also created a maze game, which is due today. And then, all next week, you can begin working on your um, platform game. Realize that usually when you walk, do the tutorial and start working with the code, this one may take about an hour, an hour and a half, because a platform game is just a little bit more complex than a maze game. That's why we started with the maze game first. But again, it's very, very doable and you have an entire week to work on the project. Then you'll see the link to turn in the platform game appear in Google Classroom as we get closer to um, that Thursday. So again, I hope you had a wonderful time and I look forward to hearing from you soon.